will uh, sort of uh, put it in a different perspective. What should be the right choice for 2020 fuel scenario? So if, for example, we keep the perspective very simple and continue status quo and keep using high sulfur fuel with the scrubber, and then I will say what's the reason behind we are really putting this proposal. You don't have to do anything. The tanks, pipelines, uh, modification of the system, you don't have to do anything. Ships will continue uh, as uh, it is uh, the way they are treating their fuel. And SCABA will take care of the rest. SCABA, there is a misconception. It is very expensive. The price has gone down, just like any other technology. At the beginning, it could be true. But right now, the SCABA price is down. Many things, even the footprint is down. A lot of efficiency uh, has gone up, just like we have seen in the ballast water treatment. And for the return of investment, it is pretty low. And uh, it is as low as 1.2 to 1.3 years. Of course, it depends on what sort of cost delta we put in the equation for the low sulfur fuel and the high sulfur. Banks and finance are there to give you the money. And at the end, another alternative could be the LNG. I mean, I, uh, in my past life, used to promote LNG. But somehow, for one reason or other, it is far behind what was predicted. It may come maybe very close to 2030. That is the best prediction we have. So a possible scenario, you don't, uh, uh, if you don't choose the status quo, you will have lots of problems. Multiple fuel, there are lots of talks going on on IMO 2020. It's very uncertain. No one likes uncertainty, of course. And um, we know, yesterday we talked about, I think Karin mentioned about the Houston crisis. And most likely, we'll be having many of those Houston crises with the IMO 2020 compliant fuel. If we look at how it is going to disrupt the heavy fuel oil supply uh, trade. So right now, it's around 200 million, some will say 230, 200 million tons of uh, sort of uh, bunker is taking place. And then we estimate around 30 million metric tons uh, will remain in the bunker pool through scrubbing, very small number, as you heard. Further 25 million will be for non-conformance or non-compliance. And the thing to note is that I think initially, NGO is going to take over uh, quite a bit of the remaining, and the compliant fuel will be the rest. It's almost 50-50. And we, that's our best guess. I think the prudent operator will choose the distillate instead of compliant fuel at the beginning. We have done quite a number of tests. This is one of the biggest labs in the world. So not many IMO 2020 fuels are there, but having said that, we have done some tests. What is scary is that the viscosity range, some of them is so low, as low as 18 CST, some of them is 310, as you see from here. Density is some very close to the diesel oil, some is very close to RMK rate. Cat funds level in some regions are high, and some stability of the fuel in some regions are pretty low number. That means it is of concern. The problems you may have, and each of them, I think it may take hours to really describe. In brief, you heard yesterday from the ship manager's uh, panel that your low sulfur compliant fuel will come from different regions. The problem you will have stability of the fuel, compatibility of the fuel, new thing come in the picture for the distillate fuel especially. There will be waxy base, coal flow problems over there, cat fine as I mentioned, flash point, CCI, density and the viscosity. These are not often talked about. 
people talk of the stability and compatibility, but this is what I try to uh, sort of uh, uh, raise concern, how the machines are going to be affected. Which are the machines going to be affected? And it's not only uh, we are worried about how is the combustibility of this fuel. We have to look at, say, engines and the boiler. Combustibility problem is one. Lubrication problem is another one. And for the boiler, EGE, if it's low CST fuel, maybe EGE becomes redundant. How are you going to dump the live steam? The drain cooler is not enough. And then the purifier efficiency is going to be affected. And many of them are hidden losses. That means you see that ship is running fine, but the combustibility is not good, the efficiency is not there, and then your fuel consumption is going to shoot up. Let's take, for example, sulfur. Is it a blessing or curse? We got used to high sulfur fuel. There was a tendency for the high corrosion. Then engine makers uh, increase the jacket cooling water temperature, make it less conducive to corrosion. And then we started feeding high TBN cylinder lube oil, or we fed more uh, CLO. But there were blessings in other way. High sulfur fuel let us have a running in period shortened from five days by diesel oil to less than a day with a heavy fuel uh, sulfur heavy sulfur fuel. Now, all of a sudden, came low sulfur fuel. Low corrosion, it is good, but should we bring down the jacket cooling you know, water temperature? Should we have the low CLO feet? Should we have low TBN uh, CLO? The answer is not there. I just happened to see the MAN expert just last week. They are giving a solution for low sulfur fuel with a low TBN and high TBN. Low BN detergents is not there. It's going to sort of foul up your engine. Every four days from low BN, you have to change to high TBN. That is the solution. Are you ready to take this, this kind of solution? Then, of course, another one is uh, running in period longer. But then it's not enough. Sulfur, low sulfur, low corrosion. Slow steaming, it is more conducive for the corrosion. Then high corrosion coming from the slow steaming. And you need a high CLF rate and high TBN. So what happens at the end of the day, what I'm saying, it is not so straightforward. It's a multi-objective criteria. And having said that, the most scary part is that we don't have adequate experience for that, neither the engine maker or the others. You can always say we have used low sulfur fuel in the echo area, but that is only for a limited period at a very reduced load. There is no experience for running the engine at high load at high C. This is another part of the uh, problem. All of us know from engineering point of view, all the design of the engines have been based on high sulfur fuel. Start from the injector design the orientation of the nozzles, the size of the holes, the angle, the pressure, viscosity, all were based on the high sulfur fuel. So two components are there. Optimization is two variables. One is the penetration, other one is the atomization. That optimize is going to shift. So we should be prepared for that. And with that, you will have very poor combustion, and then it will result in high specific fuel oil consumption. On top of that, with a higher penetration, in case you have high viscosity fuel, then it will have impediment attack on the crowns and the line of So these are very technical stuff. But what I'm saying, there's no experience on this. Last time engine maker was saying that it is between 12 to 18 CST. Now they are saying it is between 2 to 20 CST you can burn. You can burn, but there will be a lot of efficiency loss. PV5 is going to be affected because of the viscosity. And this is, uh, you can see the, the right most uh, graph. With the viscosity, low viscosity, the efficiency will be better. On top of the Stokes law, I'm not going to describe that, but viscosity alone will give some good things. Here, as you see, if the temperature goes up, viscosity goes down, 
you know, separation of the death fine uh, is far better. With the low throughput, it is better too. Distillate fuel, it ha will have its own problem. Lubricity problem, fouling problem, microbial contamination, and a high tan pollution, cold flow, it goes on and on. What I'm saying that two CST range, the engines are not designed for that, and engine makers are not doing anything on this. Um, Distillate fuel uh, problems, cold flow, uh, this is, uh, is going to happen, and new criteria, you really have to test the fuel for filter plugging point. That is, again, another thing with the cloud point, there's some relationship, so be prepared for that. We have seen the discrete fuel, the bacteria problem in the Gulf War 1991, all the American trucks, uh, military trucks, were ineffective because they were lying there for quite some time, and the discrete fuel had uh, water in it and full of microbes. They had to shift fresh oil before they launched their attack. And uh, preparation by the owner, you heard of it. The IMA implementation plan is there. Risk assessment and segregation, cleaning, and all those things are there. But when you order the fuel oil, then of course you should start with, you have to have a plan how to circulate the new uh, oil, how to avoid mixing, and uh, varying viscosity, low and LO and CLO. Wisdom of fuel choice, what I'm saying, recommend status quo, discover, open loop, and then what we are saying, that don't hedge in 2020, enjoy the benefits of low price of the fuel oil, and maybe 2021 if you want to hedge, that could be one of the options. With that, I'll finish my presentation. Thank you.